This is a drone and you know what this is. Both can be dangerous, but combine them and you get this. In recent years, drones have gotten cheaper, smarter and faster. We use them for good, but also for bad. Yesterday evening, a drone which was carrying a pipe bomb crashed near an innocent family's house in Finglas. Today, it's a house. Tomorrow, it might be a stadium. I wanted to understand how big the threat really is and whether we can stop it. So I trained my friend and gave him seven days to simulate an attack. But I also spoke to an AI warfare expert, a counter drone specialist and a war drone builder. All to find out, can a regular person carry out a simulated strike in just seven days? And more importantly, are we able to defend ourselves? It's not just possible, it's easy. The question is more, are we allowed to do it? If you have a whole swarm of drones coming, it's very hard to come for this. To fully understand the danger of drone attacks, I wanted to do an experiment. How long will it take someone with zero experience to become a kamikaze pilot? The problem is, I already know how to fly a drone. That's why I reached out to my good friend Yermund. In seven days, he will attempt to fly from this abandoned tower to our house and then attack it. To mimic the drones used in war zones, we're going to be using an FPV drone while flying in full manual mode. That means there are no algorithms algorithms helping you to keep the drone upright. And that's pretty difficult. So this is an FPV drone. Controller, you are used to a gaming controller. Yeah. yeah. Well, that will definitely help you. And these are the goggles. How long do you think it will take you to, uh, to learn this? My ego says. <laughs> Two days and I will be good, but um, probably a lot different than what I think it is. And it will feel much harder. Yeah, hard to say, but a few days. Okay, okay. It's my guess, but it yeah. uh, could be less, could be more. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think that's fair. I think there's only one way to, uh, to find out. Yeah. Okay, let's do let's, it. Let's go. While Jermund is practicing in the simulator, let's talk about why drones have quickly become the weapon of choice. Uh, in, in war, many innovations come from necessity, and you see that here as well. So the drones themselves, they came from the necessity of, okay, we need more force projection, we need more power, especially for the Ukrainians with very limited personnel. So basically, war in Ukraine showed uh, that high-tech cannot fight the low-tech that well, and the low-tech solutions show that they can be more sufficient, and the uh, Ukrainians start using this leverage uh, against a much bigger enemy. In Ukraine, there are 10,000 drones in the sky at all times. Both sides use them, and the majority of them are consumer-grade FPV drones. FPV stands for first-person view. Pilots wear goggles like this that stream a live video feed directly from the drone. And they're being flown with a controller that actually quite resembles a PlayStation controller. The live feed combined with the controller allows for incredibly precise maneuvers. Some people use FPV drones for racing, others for freestyle, but it's also a very cheap way to perform attacks. Ukraine has carried out coordinated drone attacks at several military air bases across Russia, as far away as eastern Siberia. At least 40 Russian aircraft were hit, causing billions of dollars worth of damage. They are not these multi-million systems that you have to import from very advanced weapon manufacturers. You can very easily craft them yourself using off-the-shelf parts. Um, Ukrainian soldiers, uh, they often do this themselves uh, in a bunker somewhere. So they make that little drone, they attach an explosive to it. And you, and, and you can make many of these for relatively cheap. Uh, so to assemble the drone, you will need to around 250 euro plus the battery, another say 100, so 350 euro for drone. The drones are cheap, dangerous and super accessible, but how hard is it to fly them? If you have some experience before, you can fly on second day. If you, if you want to fly in a combat way, so you know how to find positions, uh, how to prepare the drone, uh, plan the mission, it takes longer. But you can learn how to fly the drone in three days. Well, no pressure, Jermund. Let's see how he's doing in the simulator. Is it harder or easier than you expected? It's much harder. <laughs> like, uh, this is next level 
PlayStation shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. hard. It's so much more sensitive than I thought it was gonna be. But it was gonna be easier to like do easy turns. Um, but I feel like the easy turns are the hardest. <laughs> so um, definitely harder. All right. So you you don't feel ready to to fly the real drone yet? Nay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no. just keep practicing. Yarmoun still has a long way to go before he's able to carry out an attack, but it certainly wouldn't be the first time. A recent Homeland Security bulletin suggests terrorists want to take a strategic jump using new technology. One potential tactic, using armed drones to carry out attacks. In 2018, the Islamic State shared these terrifying posters on the internet. Nothing actually ever happened, but it's a good reminder that drone technology has been on the radar of people with bad intentions for years. Imagine uh, the ISIS that could exist now. If ISIS existed now, I imagine 100% they would leverage this technology. In the same year that the posters were shared, consumer drones were used in a failed attempt to assassinate Venezuelan President Maduro. In Mexico, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel has been using bomb dropping drones for the last five years to attack their rifles, but also the police. And more recently, a drone carrying a pipe bomb crashed at a house in Dublin as a result of a gang war. To my knowledge, it's the first case of attack drones being used in Europe in a non combat environment. So, what's next? This will happen. One day or another, terrorists will use this weapon in the future. So it's been a few days and yeah, Jarmund has been practicing a lot. So let's see how he's doing and if he's made some improvements over the last few days. Here he is, practicing. How are we doing over here, Jarmund? Practice makes not perfect but it makes, <laughs> it makes better <laughs> yeah you, you feel like you've improved over the last uh, couple days yeah i can like control it even more um i'm not able to like uh, go straight into things i want to but mm -hmm. i can go like around it a lot better okay in just a short time jermund's skills have improved dramatically he's almost ready but if he can do it more people can. So how do we stop them? Uh, my name is Mary Lou Smulders. I am the chief marketing officer at D-Drone by Axon, the global leader in airspace security. What does that mean? Protecting against unauthorized drones. They can be careless and clueless. It could be more nefarious. Because drones are controlled by radio frequencies, it is possible to disrupt the signal. The drone then becomes uncontrollable and crashes. But there are countermeasures to the countermeasures. Recently, two types of drones were developed that are invincible to jamming. So from necessity again comes this new innovation. If it's jammed, either you lose control or it crashes. But if uh, you can install AI that allows it to continue to navigate towards the target, then of course this gives you a very significant advantage. On June 1st, 2025, Ukraine sent a swarm of these AI-powered drones into Russia and destroyed billions worth of aircraft, approximately 4,000 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. The drones were snuck into the country, hidden in wooden boxes on trucks and left there for weeks. But AI drones are not the only new kid on the block. Now there are drones which fly on the cable, on optic fiber cable. So there is no radio frequency signature. You cannot detect the drone and you also cannot jam it. There is nothing to jam. AI drones, fiber optic drones, it all sounds very scary. Luckily, it is possible to stop these drones. But before we explore how, let's do one final check-in with Jermund. It's Jermund's last day of practice, so let's see how he's doing. He was pretty good last time I checked. Enough to carry out an attack? No, probably not. <laughs> but he was flying without crashing. Okay. So that's good. That's got to count for something. Yeah. Where is he? He's right there. He's where he should be. Oh, he's grinding over there. Practicing. Locked in. Locked in. Last day of practice. Yeah, moment of truth. <laughs> yeah, how are we doing over here? 
it's uh, better. I feel more comfortable with the controller and nothing is like unfamiliar anymore. Okay. So hopefully it will be a successful real, <laughs> let's, real flight. Let's find out. Yeah. See these jellies? Looks good, man. And then? That's such a big difference though, from a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seems ready, but if this was real life, would we be able to stop him? Is it possible? Absolutely. It's super easy. The technology exists today. In the US, we already have 52 cities where we have our sensors and all you have to do is, you know, ask for a subscription. Draw your little circle about where you want to know if a drone is coming and we can alert you. To stop a drone, you need to be able to spot it. D-Drone uses a combination of radio detection, radar technology and optical sensors to spot pretty much everything in the sky. We discuss jamming for normal drones, but what if we're dealing with AI drones or optic fiber drones? One that we are able to talk publicly about is our partnership with Talus and their Bushmaster, which is mounted with the most massive machine gun to mitigate drones in a kinetic manner. The question is more, you know, are we allowed to do it? The laws in many countries, including the United States and Canada, are antiquated. That drones were considered an aircraft and therefore have virtually the same protections as a Boeing full of humans. This is also the case in Europe, and that's a problem. Sure, you can bring in the military to protect your biggest events, but if you want to be able to protect a concert, the police in most countries do not have the clearance to jam drones or shoot them down. The hope is that it does not take a terrible incident to get action from the governments around the world. The seven days are over and it's time to put Yermoon's skills to the test. Will he be able to perform an attack? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Extra focus. Fucking <laughs> shit. No worries. The drone is kind of. Oh, there it is. Just fly around for a little bit. Feels like Call of Duty. Let's go, bro. How was that? It's good, now the real tests. Ah, oh, you get fucking dizzy by this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, now it's manual mode. Okay. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Let's go, dude. You're flying all by yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm over the house now. You, do you think you would be able to crash into the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could crash into whatever I want now. <laughs> Mission accomplished. How did that feel? I'm shaking. <laughs> My stomach is hurting, but it's super fun. I mean, when we started, you you told me like it was, it feels impossible. It feels super difficult. Yeah. It did take a few days to learn, but. Overall, like, would you say that it is doable to, to learn this in a week, just to go from basic A to B? Yeah, 100%. I think anyone who really go for it, like, can do this in a week. Yeah, so you do need some preparation, some some training, but definitely not impossible. No, 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 this is possible. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, bro. So we are back in Amsterdam. It's the end of the video. I just want to clarify that my goal for this video 
was not to fear monger. The idea came from genuine questions I had. How dangerous is drone technology if it falls into the wrong hands? And how well protected are we if something does happen? It was a relief to learn that there is technology out there to counter nefarious drones, but the rules need to be updated if we want to actually use them and not rely on the army to do it. So it would probably be a good idea to give law enforcement some more tools in this regard. As Mary Lou put it, we shouldn't have to wait for a tragedy to act. However, I do want to end this video on a positive note, and I think Mary Lou said it best. We are seeing drones save lives every day. I think we need to make sure not to villainize drones. They're a tool and in the right hands can offer amazing opportunities for people. Thanks to everyone that helped me make this video. And if you've made it this far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because it really helps me out a lot. And yeah, as always, I really hope to see you in the next one.